Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Good morning, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. So this entire situation with the woman that I now call Gorilla Glue Sue, okay, that's what I call her. And I started calling her that even before she decided to try and sue. So we had a really dope Zoom meeting yesterday with my Discorders. And that's the part that was like really bothering me is that anywhere outside of the Discord, like what happened to just people like saying, okay, well, fine, y'all want to support her, y'all believe her, that's on y'all. I didn't yeah. knock anybody for believing her. I said, I don't believe her. This is some bullshit. Right. Exactly. And they were attacking people on Twitter. If you really? were not sympathizing with her, you were a black woman basher. Oh, you're attacking your own kind. I mean, it was just ridiculous the things I was seeing on Twitter. Yeah, and like you said on the live screen, well, on the live stream, you were like, "Why is it when I give my opinion, or when, when you know, when I'm being honest about how I feel, I'm being a hater? What is that?" And you see that all the time. It's just mm -hmm. another part of this whole like grand scheme, the pandemic, to make everybody a dummy. That's what I feel. Like yeah. not only are people getting sick, not only are people, you know, losing their jobs, but they're losing their minds, they're losing their common sense, they're losing their wherewithal. And shout out to everybody who came yesterday to the meeting. We had close to 325 people join. Great discussion, just so much. It's just so refreshing to see people who have common sense and discernment and, you know, who just really make good points about the imagery and about, you know, how social media just pushes certain things to go viral. But the things that people are doing in the community, they won't uplift that. And that's the sad part. So we really went deep yesterday. So I appreciate everybody who took time out to come to the two and a half hour meeting. Um, it was really nice getting to speak to a lot of you guys and getting to just see y'all's perspective as well as mine. Lots of people spoke, lots of people had opinions, and we really broke this shit down. And we just discovered so many lies with this woman... Ch with this woman, Tessica's story, so many holes. Um, we went really deep with it, just everything that's going on with her. And so at, initially, I didn't want to do a solo video, but a lot of folks was like, you have to put this together. You have to do a video on this situation. So I decided this morning to do one. I'm going to do a small breakdown video, and then I'll eventually go live on YouTube, and we can talk about it then. But before I get into this breakdown, I need to go ahead and play a flashback for you guys. Because I already know there's going to be a lot of mush mouth bitches, miserable ass people coming on here to say that I'm picking on this woman and how dare I not, you know, take up for a black woman and all this stupid shit. But for my real tea sippers who've been here for years, y'all know how I get down. I don't give a damn your race, your gender, none of that shit. I'm about the truth and I'm about integrity. So I've been calling out scammers for years. So for all y'all and y'all's feelings, for people who are trying to troll me on Instagram and all that stupid shit, bitch, this is not new to me, okay? I've been doing this. So let me go ahead and play this flashback for y'all. Y'all go ahead and watch this. And then I'll go ahead and break down this whole Gorilla Glue Sue story, okay? Go ahead and check this out. So initially, I wasn't going to do a video on this because I just don't care about this shit, period, point blank. When the video went viral, I watched it. Felt no type of way and scrolled on to the next topic, okay? Now, a lot of y'all might say that I'm mean, I'm jaded and all this goofy shit. Because as soon as, you know, you don't fall for the mainstream social media attitude towards anything viral, you're a mean person. But what a lot of y'all don't realize is that the reason why I did not fall for this whole Quaden Bayless situation is because I've been on social media a long time. And I've seen a lot of these viral stories come and go, okay? And a lot of them are contrived. And a a lot of people have ulterior motives, okay? Back in, I believe it was 2010, 2011, a grandmother claimed that her granddaughter, whose face was disfigured from a dog bite, that they went into a KFC and she was made fun of. And this went viral. It tugged at the heartstrings of America. People set up a whole fund me for the family. The family got a bunch of whole fund me money. Only to find out after people on the internet started snooping and trying to find this KFC where it took place so that way they could confront the people who disrespected the little girl. Come to find out 
after going through surveillance footage and everything else, the little girl was never at a KFC. Nobody did anything to this little girl. It was simply made up. And I was one of the few bloggers at that time who did not post the story. I felt the story was just contrived. It was just fake. And, you know, when I came to talk about the story, I was like, they need to make sure that, you know, that little girl's not in danger because for all we know, they could have made the dog attack the little girl to bite her in the face so that way they could get sympathy and money. Honey, y'all done made me go and to my archives, bitch, okay? Had to go through five years worth of video to find where I talked about that KFC story and other viral stories so you guys can get a, so you guys can get an understanding of my logic, why I just, I don't care and things just don't pull at my heartstrings, okay? I learned this five years ago and I've been the same way since. So y'all go ahead and enjoy this flashback. And folks were donating money and everything else. And people were sending me the story. Kevin Duke sent me the story. VH1 Access. So many folks sent me this story. But if you guys go on my Facebook page, I never shared the story. I never spoke on the story. I never posted the story. Nor did I record a video on the story. Why? Because I knew in my heart of hearts this story was bullshit. Okay? And this is why I didn't do a video on it because every time I do a video saying I'm not buying something or, or you know, I, I don't buy this story, I get attacked, I get threatened, I get cussed out. Let's go back to last year, okay? Let's go back to Sharmika Moffitt. When she came out and she said that some KKK members, you know, beat her ass and she said they poured some type of flammable solution on her and then lit her up, I called bullshit from day one. I was threatened by so many black folks. Oh, you're not shit, coon bitch. And she was really attacked by the KKK. You're full of shit for, for you know, questioning her story. A week later, it came out that the bride burnt herself up to make her boyfriend mad and to, you know, get attention from the world. Did anybody apologize to me? Nope. Motherfuckers threatened to unsubscribe, cuss me out. I had to deal with all types of nasty emails. But then when it came out that she lied, no apologies, no I'm sorry for, you know, sending you that nasty email and threatening you. You know, none of that, right? So then after that, the whole situation came out with Tony, the Red Lobster girl who claimed that somebody wrote none nigger on her receipt and folks would donate money. Then again, I said, I'm not buying her story. I'm not really feeding into this. I, I don't believe this. And then especially once the customer came out and said that he didn't write that, and then all of a sudden Tony was so quick to say, well, fine, maybe he didn't write it. Well, bitch, you told the world that he wrote it. Now you're trying to backtrack? Nah. But even then, folks were going off on me. How you know he didn't write it and da 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 Sat back. Now it's been proven through um, he went and got a person to check out his handwriting, lie detector tests, and everything else. It's been proven that, that Tony and her co-workers lied. Then we had the gay woman who came out talking about somebody wrote, you know, they don't want a lesbian waitress and all this other bullshit. I said it on Facebook. It's funny how nobody can just, you know, go to a restaurant anymore and just tip normally. Folks are writing whole books on receipts and shit. Basically calling it out that the story was fake. And once again, after people ran and donated to the gay waitress, it came out that the gay waitress lied for attention and the story was fake, okay? And then after that, we had the big fat bitch in Home Depot who decided to glue her ass to the toilet seat. Folks want to know my opinion, and in that video, I said I wasn't buying it. Something's not right. I don't understand. You know, if it's super glue, it usually dries fairly quickly, and for it to really, you know, stick to her, I wasn't buying it. Then it came out a week later that this was all a hoax. The bitch wanted some money. She wanted to sue Home Depot and everything else. So, TT is to the point now where I get tired of all these stories that go viral and they pull at people's heartstrings and I just don't feed into them anymore. I just don't. You know what I'm saying? Certain stories, yes, but unless there's like definite proof, police reports and everything else, I'm not about to just donate my money to just any damn cause. And it seems like too many folks do that. And this whole situation is just really, really disturbing how this family got over. All right, y'all just seen that. That was a young TT from a few years back, keeping it real as I still keep it real to this day. So now do y'all understand why I personally just don't jump on anything viral? That when I see things like that, I scroll right past it because I've seen the same song and dance before, damn it. All right, so y'all just saw that flashback. So like I said, I'm not new to this rodeo. You may be, but me and my tea sippers, the ones who know me, know how I get down and know that this is what I do. I don't get emotionally attached to shit. 
not on social media because I've I've seen this song and dance time and time again. And it's really sad be- because social media hypes up the most trivial bullshit, blows it up, gets these scammers famous. And then, you know, once the truth come out, people want to get mad and upset. Don't get mad that you got played. Next time, use discernment and do your due diligence. So on Sunday, I did a live stream where I talked about it. And I didn't even have to go that deep Sunday. You know what I'm saying? I basically told the truth. I'm not buying what she's saying. Um, the fact that this is a 40 year old woman tells me a lot. A lot of people didn't even a lot of people didn't even do enough research to realize that this was not a 20 year old. This is a 40 year old woman with kids. So we talked about this in the Discord, and thank God for the Discord because it seemed like that was really the only safe place that we had on social media to really dig deep and really talk about it because anybody that was speaking out against this woman on Twitter or Instagram, you were instantly shamed, you were attacked, you were told that you weren't trying to protect black women, you were self-hating coon. I mean, all types of just stupid responses from people, people conflating issues, people saying that, oh, you know... This, once again, is because black women's self-esteem, because they have to wear their hair a certain way, and it's because of the European standard of beauty. I mean, the conflating of issues was really sickening. And what that does is that it diminishes real issues and it trivializes real issues that black people go through, like not being able to wear their dreadlocks to work, not being able to have their hair a certain way. Those are real issues. A grown woman deciding to allegedly put Gorilla Glue in her hair, that's not the same thing. And I say allegedly because by the time we got done with our meeting last night, we came to the conclusion that she don't even have Gorilla Glue in her hair. We took the shit back to the 90s. That's how deep we got with the shit. So let me go ahead and start here. Now, after I did my live stream, I think at that point she was only at like $800 on GoFundMe. She wasn't verified. She was at like 400,000 subscribers. Let me go ahead and say this first and foremost. I don't care with the fact that she's made all this money on GoFundMe. I think she's up to like $12,000 or something. She'll probably end up getting close to thirty grand when this is all said and done from GoFundMe. I could care less. I don't pocket watch people. I'm not donating my money. I don't care what y'all choose to do with y'all's. So I'm not coming from an angle like, oh my God, you just don't want her to get no money. Honey, if people are dumb enough to give you money based off of your lies, I say good. I'm glad you got them. They deserve to lose their money. Now, Instagram also verified her because she went to go apply for a verification. She applied. They approved it. It is what it is. Are there more legitimate people who should be verified? Absolutely. But again, Instagram and social media, you got to understand the play. They're always willing to verify and legitimize shit that makes black folks look crazy. Oh, they won't have a problem with that. But when legitimate people submit for the same thing, denied, no response. But kudos to her for her blue check mark. She played the game well. So let me go ahead and say this. I didn't care about her being verified, not my business. I don't care about her GoFundMe, because like I said, if you're stupid enough to donate, you need you don't need the money. So kudos to her. Kudos to all the scammers who got over on people over the years. Kudos to you, bitch. Just like when y'all got mad with that little boy, y'all got him a hundred thousand dollar GoFundMe and then found out he was calling folks all types of niggers. I say good. I hope he went to Disney World. I hope his family had a good old funky time based off of y'all's foolishness and constantly allowing people to emotionally manipulate you. So this is not me hating on her getting a bag. Do you, boo? My issue is the lies. And my issue is the fact that now she's trying to basically go after a company who did nothing wrong. And as a business owner, I take great offense to that. I take great offense to people not taking personal responsibility and trying to call themselves shifting the blame. So let's go ahead and kind of break this down because we bought receipts. This girl is a liar and a fraud, okay? When she first came on the scene... Something about her energy, her eyes bucking out and all that weirdo shit. I got mammy vibes from her. Okay. First of all, it's Black History Month. She's coming out, patting her head and eyes are bugging out and doing all this. You know, she's just playing up this caricature, this mammy archetype. You know, she's trying to talk extra, extra Southern. And y'all know I'm here for a good Louisiana accent. I think that's some of the most sexiest accents. But I know when people are trying to play their accent up and sound even more slow and things like that. She's trying to play this ditzy role. And this woman is not ditzy at all. Okay. Even the pictures that the mainstream media are using is really disturbing to me. 
Because so many times as black people, we get called apes, monkeys, gorillas. Those are apothecs that we are called to this day. If you guys remember fellow beauty influencer Jackie Ina, this was just two years ago where Jeffree Star was exposed by one of his old friends. And um, in those messages from Jeffree Star, he called Jackie Ina a gorilla. And this was a trending topic. So these are not old words that are used back in the 60s and 70s. These are still racial apothecs that are being used to this day. So I feel a way about this whole Gorilla Glue situation. I really do. So this is a this is a racial apathy that black people are called, especially dark skinned black women. So when I see this woman and the media is taking screenshots of her in certain positions with her eyes bugged out, with her nose flared, and then they have a bottle of Gorilla Glue with the gorilla picture right next to her face where she looks almost gorilla like because of the way her face is posed. I don't take that as happenstance. I don't take that as funny or coincidence. Then you have another picture of her. And this was on the Daily Mail. This was on TMZ. This was on legitimate news sites that were using pictures like this. You had the picture of her with her hands on her head, with her mouth out, where it looks like she's going, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's the vibe I get from that picture. And you can Google, you know, gorillas in the wild, and you'll see them with their hands on their head doing the same pose. But we're always the butt of the joke, and we don't realize it. It is Black History Month. This has now become international news. And I know a lot of folks want to say, well, she's one black woman. She doesn't represent me. Unfortunately, she does. OK, we had a young black girl call in yesterday from China. She lived in China for many years, excuse me. And she was like, representation is a big deal because a lot of people around the world do not actually get to meet and know black people. And what they know of us is from movies and television shows and going viral. So this being blasted, this being verified, her having a platform, stupid ass celebrities and goofy ass influencers co-signing this bullshit has now legitimized this woman. So the problem with that is now subconsciously the narrative is black women are we're shiftless, we're stupid, we're lazy. We're so desperate to keep another race's hair attached to our head that we are willing to use Gorilla Glue to keep it on. We're so ashamed of what grows out of our scalp that instead of waiting for the for the supposed got to be glue to come back on sale or going from store to store to find the right product, she was willing to put a chemical adhesive in her hair because that is how terrible black hair is. Do y'all understand what is subconsciously being told to people? You don't have to verbally say anything. Subconsciously, this is what's being drilled in the mainstream. That this particular hair, these particular people's self-esteem is so low. Look what they're willing to do. And these publications are making money all the way to the bank off of your foolishness. So let me get this clear. She came out five days ago after making videos on TikToks for months, her and her sister. She comes out and she says that basically... She had put this product on her hair because she ran out of got to be glue and she purposely put the Gorilla Glue in her hair thinking mm, it will be the same thing. But now she's finding out that it's not coming out and it took her a month to realize this. But those of y'all that know me know my hair has been like this for about a month now. The problem with your story, Gorilla Glue Sue, a.k.a. Tessica Brown, is the fact that when we went and we searched your social media pages, that was not the same hairstyle that you had a month ago. So this might be a tad bit confusing to some of the slow pokes in the back, but to everybody else who can keep up, here we go. Okay, so on Friday, February 5th is when she officially went viral. She posted this video onto her Instagram and onto her TikTok page, okay? So this was the fifth, five days ago. She stated in that video that she's had this style in for about a month. But as we dug through her Instagram, you guys will see that her hair was not like this a month ago. Here goes a picture of her from January 1st, okay? So January 1st to February, those are two totally different hairstyles. You see this here with the brown ponytail with the blonde streaks and her hair straight back. Then a few days later, 
This was her January 10th. Okay. With the whole different hairstyle with the swoop bang. She has like some type of cartoon filter on her face, but that's her. Also, another picture from around that same time was taken on January 9th. Again, the same picture with the swoop bang. If her hair was frozen in place from this Gorilla Glue for a month like she's claiming, how was she able to switch up these hairstyles? How was she able to move frozen hair from this original picture here that was taken on her live stream? How is she able to move that hair to swoop it alongside her bang? And if you try and say, oh, well, she might have added a track. Why would she damage her hair even more? Why would she add a track and swoop it and add more gel? Is she so scared about this alleged Gorilla Glue being in her hair? Think about it, people. And this is why I always tell people, stop getting emotionally invested and actually research. But she claims her hair has been stuck like this for a month. That doesn't make any sense. Another thing we realized is that I believe that there's more than one person involved in this. I believe that her sister is very much involved in this. There's no way that you could spray Gorilla Glue onto your hair and have it slick down that smooth. That's not how hairstyles work. You'd have to gel it down with a water-based product to get it smooth and brush it out. If she was slicking her hair down with Gorilla Glue, that brush would have been stuck in her hair. Her hands would have been stuck in her hair. The bristles. Just even spraying Gorilla Glue. Anybody who does arts and crafts understands that it is a chemical. The smell is horrible. Anything that's aerosol gets everywhere. That is why a lot of times when you do arts and crafts projects, you take it outside. You go to the sidewalk. You go to your balcony. You go outside to spray it because you will have adhesive glue all over your bathroom, all over your kitchen, things like that. Most people do not spray any type of aerosol glue in their home. Matter of fact, even if you go look up random videos of people using aerosol spray, because most spray glues are all the same. I don't care if it's Gorilla Glue, 3M. They all basically have the same properties. And you will see YouTubers from videos from years ago using gloves, wearing a mask, just like I described on my live stream. That is how you're supposed to use an aerosol spray. Anybody who does any type of crafting knows this. And this woman, guess what? Ding, ding, ding. She's a craft. She's a crafter just like I'm a crafter and just like thousands of women are crafters all over the country. We found her selling her her crafts on her social media page from digging. We found an old craft that she put together. Um, she does a lot of bedazzling. So if you know anything about bedazzling or putting things on glass, you have to know your glues. OK, so for her to bedazzle a his and hers um, wine glass set. Means she understands glue. From looking at that picture, it looks like she used E6000 glue. That is one of the most favorite glues of any bedazzler to put on bling bling, to hook up glasses and things like that. So you mean to tell me in 2014 she understood that enough to make these items and sell them on her social media page. But now in 2020, she doesn't understand how glues work. Miss me with the bullshit and watch these videos. Spray surface and allow to dry for at least 30 seconds. <laughs> My gloves are sticking together. My gloves are sticking together. My gloves are sticking together. Think about it. Even what got to be glue when you spray it. Some of that stuff gets on the counter and it can make your counter sticky. All you have to do is wipe it off. But imagine Gorilla Glue. Who's going to just spray it like that? And when you're using those type of products... Even before the C-19, you wear a mask and you do it either outside or in a highly ventilated area because even the chemical alone is an irritant to just breathe in. So I'm not buying her story whatsoever. Another thing, when she first came onto social media, oh, she was beat to the gods. Contacts, makeup done, lashes, her ponytail is redone and rebraided. Why? If this is a dire situation, why are you still trying to hang on to that ponytail weave as opposed to making it about your real hair? Another thing that we noticed is before this story was really blowing up and getting traction, anybody who was giving this girl real advice from dermatologist to um, hairstylist, she was ignoring them. 
But anybody giving her attention or sympathy, she was kikiing with them, laughing, you know, emojis, everything else. But the people giving her real advice, she ignored. But then once the celebrities started giving her advice and acknowledging her, like Chance the Rapper, Portia Williams, and so many other people, oh, then she didn't have a problem replying back to, you know, the, the big celebrities. They're talking about arrogant Tay supposed to be doing her hair and, you know, different people are going to be sending her wigs and all this stuff. This woman and her sister are loving the attention. Yesterday, we watched her sister repost um, them making it onto the Wendy Williams show. And her sister was laughing, kikiing it up, super happy that they made it on there. Y'all go ahead and check out this video. Take a look and then we'll talk. Take a look. <laughs> 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 If this is such a serious situation and that's your sister, why are you laughing and so happy she made it on Wendy? Also, they're promoting it on their new YouTube channel that they've started as well. And her sister has been posting a lot of stuff to the YouTube channel. Now, on top of all of this, you know, sudden fame that they're getting and all of this attention whoring um, that they're both doing. She also is a teacher in the classroom. We found this picture of her um, from 2019 where she says, good afternoon from your favorite teacher. You can see her in a classroom setting. I'm assuming she works with younger kids, but she's a teacher. Also, do you notice how she has the same exact hairstyle a year ago as she had in the month of January. So this seems to be a very easy, popular style for her to do. It's very reminiscent of hairstyles from the 90s that we applied with a bunch of gel. But I'll get to that a little bit later. So the people talking about she's slow and maybe she's off. Stop with the reaching. There's nothing slow about this woman. If anything, you guys are discrediting people with disabilities because everybody with disabilities is not slowing off. And some of those people that may not be able to speak and do things as well, they're highly intelligent. Don't get it twisted. So I don't like the fact that people are even trying to attempt to say that she might be special needs because she's not. OK, on top of her being a teacher, um, she also has a dance team called the Dazzling Divas. So a lot of people were saying that she was on Bring It and they battled against the dancing dolls, which you guys know is one of my favorite shows. Um, but upon further research, because that's what I do, I'm not going to put out fake news. Her dance team is called the Dancing Divas with a Z. The team that Miss D and the Dancing Dolls battled is the Dazzling Divas with the S. Two totally different teams. So she was never on Bring It. So I do want to clear that up for that rumor that's being spread. That is not her dance team, but she does have a dance team. And I am hearing rumors that they are trying to give her some type of show around that dance team. But to make it clear, it is not the same Dazzling Divas that was on season two of Bring It. So she's been trying to get her girls on for a while and get them seen and things like that. And if you guys know anything about those shows, um, those girls, they have to be on point. The hair done, makeup, dance moves, all of that stuff. So, again, you cannot tell me this woman does not know about hair. I showed you guys pictures on her Instagram page that day when I went live, how her hair was fried, dyed, and laid to the side. So she definitely understands hair okay on top of that we've also been watching her family's reactions to her newfound fame and what we notice on her facebook page is that her family is super gassed up by this attention um snoop dogg had posted her and her family members were elated so this is the picture of snoop dogg posting her on his instagram page and if you go and you read the comments from her family members that we screenshotted you can see where they're saying things like the spotlight is all yours. Yes. Hand claps. Go get them. This person is saying he's cool, though. Don't be mad at him. Prayers to you for real. In this picture from two days ago, one of her family members is adding her and they're saying, Tessica Brown, this is so wild. And you see underneath Kamala Harris, Gorilla Glue hair is trending. 
And they're all laughing at this. Somebody else says Gorilla Glue needs to be sending you a check. And some of these might be friends. I'm just, you know, they might be family or friends. Who knows? But these are people that she's close to. Somebody else says, get that bread, Tessica Brown. Somebody else is saying, I saw it on BET News. This person is saying, I'm still laughing every time I see this. Get this, sis. You been funny and crazy, but this right here. So does this sound like a woman who just accidentally did this? The way her friends and family members are praising her. Oh, there's more. I love it. That bag. Secure that bag. Get your money, hun. i I'm loving it. These are all her friends cheering her on. See, she ain't deleted this shit because we got all these screenshots, honey. Somebody else says viral, I say. Another person says drop the damn product. You're going to be rich. Post your girls dancing so they can dance for the Super Bowl. I see it. You trending on all platforms. Somebody else says you better get a deal out of this. And then someone else says you headed to be someone you headed to be on someone's show. Now here, Portia Williams posted it and she posted this Friday with laughing emojis and everything else. So she's loving this attention, honey. She is here for it. And because of all this foolishness and attention that you guys have given her, you know, like I said, verification and GoFundMe aside, because that's on the dummies who donated. But besides all the attention you guys are giving her, you guys have not amped her up to go sue an innocent company. And the sad part is when we went to go look at her GoFundMe yesterday, we saw legitimate comments like this. This is how stupid people are. This person wrote, sending you well wishes. This was a horrific thing that happened to you. Hopefully you can get the medical care that you need. Gorilla Glue is a horrible company and should have provided more support. I pray your hair is restored in full and better. And I'm sure they're writing better than ever. And this person donated twenty five dollars. Do you understand how dumbed down society has gotten when a person is sending twenty five dollars to shame a company who had nothing to do with this woman's fuckery? Gorilla Glue is not a hair product. We've all seen the commercials, the Super Bowl commercials. It is for wood, metal, glass and things like that. But this person is blaming a company for not providing a woman who put herself in a situation with more support. This is ridiculous. And then what's even more sad with this, I think the part that bothers me even more than the scamming and and the stupidity of society, because that doesn't shock me, is the fact that we have teenage girls out here and boys who have now started the Gorilla Glue Challenge where they are spraying this shit in their hair in hopes of going viral and getting a blue check mark. Why? Because a 40-year-old woman did it. So now the babies are following like baby lemmings. Y'all go ahead and check this out. I ran out this morning, though. I just got to put a touch-up on it this morning before I head out to the city vibe. And I'm Ain't no more got to be. So... So y'all just watch that disturbing video. That is real Gorilla Glue that that young girl was spraying in her hair. Baby girl, them Bantu knots, you're going to have to cut them out because you're following this foolish trend that this woman helped to spark. So this whole situation, like I said, is a hot mess. Um, She did an interview. So this is another reason why I don't feel bad for her and I feel like she's conning everyone. She did an exclusive interview with 92.5. And in that interview, something struck me really weird. She said in the interview that she went to the hospital, but then left because it was going to take 20 hours for them to get the Gorilla Glue out of her hair. So basically, this woman refused services. And y'all can try and twist it however y'all want to in y'all's heads. But this is a refusal of service. If something is that important to you and it's causing you this much discomfort after a month, allegedly... There's no way you would leave the hospital if you were seriously seeking treatment. So I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this interview really quick. Lean water and try to, you know, cool it off. But it burned so bad to where my heart started beating too fast. Oh, no. So she still stopped. And she told me it looked like she can do it, but it's going to take at least 20 hours. 20 hours? Two zero? Yes. Okay, so then what happened? So I, I, I asked them, 
you know, can I go home? You know, at least I'll be home and I'll be comfortable yeah. instead of just laying in the hospital bed trying to get it all out. They gave me some um, saline water. They gave me some neuropolis removal wipes to go home with. The thing is, like, every time we saw it, it burns, like, oh. extremely oh, no. bad. Oh, and you can't even get yeah. it to a point where it loosens the hair a little bit that you can then just shave it all off. And that's the point that I'm trying not to get to. I re- all right, so you guys just heard that interview where the girl one admitted to putting it on her head. She admitted to going to the hospital after a month and then leaving before they could even render services. And then you see the video of her and her sister trying to put the product on her hair and she's covering her face. And I believe she's covering her face because she's laughing at how stupid the Internet is. Y'all check this out. Her sister is definitely involved. And if you watch that video, why the hell is this ponytail still in her head? If they are trying to remove this glue from her hair to try and, you know, get it to lift and try and brush it out slowly and, you know, get it out of her hair. Why is that ponytail still attached? So why is it still attached if you guys are really trying to get all of this junk out of her hair? It just does not make any sense the moves that they're making for people who understand hair and for people who just have common sense. They're trying to remove it, but yet and still this big bulky ponytail is in the way. It does not make any sense. So now another thing that's like really pissing a lot of people off is the fact that her lawyer, because now when you go to her profile, she has a lawyer, she has a celebrity manager. So she has all this representation now in less than, you know, a week. So her lawyer is speaking and her lawyer has pissed a lot of people off because Glorilla Glue, they have released a statement and that wasn't good enough for the lawyer because it's obvious he's an ambulance chaser. So the lawyer says Glorilla Glue, hair is not skin. Your product failed to adequately warn knowing hair glue in fact exists. And many black women use hair glue and hair adhesives for this, your company is liable. You should have given her a sponsorship deal. Instead, you will be held accountable. Child, go ahead and check out this TikTok video, honey. Gorilla Glue, hair is not skin. Your product failed to adequately warn, knowing hair glue in fact exists. And many black women use hair glue as hair adhesive. And for this, your company is liable. You should have given her a sponsorship deal. Instead, you will be held accountable. I know you are not serious. I know you are not serious. Ain't no way you are. I know you lose cases back to back to back. If this is how you are fighting case, a sponsorship. She put industrial adhesive in her hair. You want them to sponsor her? Who are you a lawyer for? Who are you a lawyer for? How did you pass the bar? Because if you pass the bar, we need to move the bar a little bit further. Knowing hair glue, in fact, exists in many black people. Don't put black women in this. Don't, don't, don't put them in this. That was that sister's mistake. You sound ridiculous. A sponsorship deal. For what? All right, so you guys just watched that video. And once again, like I've been saying since I went live Sunday, stop attaching black women to this bullshit. Stop every time one black person does something somehow, you know, this is black women's plight. This is her plight. This ain't got shit to do with me and many other black women who are sitting here minding our business and trying to live life one day at a time. This is so ridiculous that this lawyer is doing this. The fact that she lawyered up and she's looking to sue. And her whole defense is I want to sue because there wasn't enough warning on the particular label. So this is what Tessica's lawyer told TMZ. 
They said, remember, Tessica says her hair had been rock solid for about a month after substituting Gorilla Glue spray adhesive for her normal hairspray. Gorilla Glue told us the quickest possible remedy was rubbing alcohol. Our sources say that Tessica hired an attorney and is weighing her legal options against Gorilla Glue. We're told the label on the product she used says do not use on eyes, skin or clothing with no mention of hair, which Tessica feels is misleading. So what Tessica and this crooked ass lawyer are about to do is basically stronghold this company. And this is what I have an issue with here. What they're going to do is say, well, because they did not mention hair, she has a case and she should be paid X amount of dollars for damages and everything else. When everybody else with common sense knows that if it says don't put on skin and your hair is growing from your skin and your scalp, I mean, that should just be that shouldn't even have to be said. But they're going to try and go with that flimsy little, you know, thing right there. And what's going to happen, even though Gorilla Glue is not in the wrong in this situation, they've done nothing wrong because of all of this bad press that she has caused them being an agent of chaos. They're going to settle with her. They're going to end up settling because they're such a big company. And when a company is that big, they just don't want the headache. When you have people sending GoFundMe money and they're basically chastising and blaming Gorilla Glue, when you go onto their personal page and you see people in the comment section shaming them and saying that they need to put out a statement, they need to say something, this is ridiculous. They're going to end up settling with her. And this was her end game. This is what she wanted when it was all said and done. And this lawyer that's representing her saw a way to worm themselves in to a lawsuit And they're going to run with it. And they're most likely going to settle and she's going to get some more money. Now, Gorilla Glue did put out an official statement. This is what they said. We are aware of the situation and we are very sorry to hear about the unfortunate incident that Miss Brown has experienced using our spray adhesive on her hair. This is a unique situation because this product is not indicated for use in or on hair as it is considered permanent. Our spray adhesive states in the warning label, do not swallow, do not get in eyes, on skin, or on clothing. It is used for craft, home, auto, or office projects to mount things to surfaces such as paper, cardboard, wood, laminate, and fabrics. We are glad to see in her most recent video that Ms. Brown has received medical treatment from her local facility and wish her the best. So they basically had to put that out. And it's sad because they shouldn't even have to address this foolishness. This was 100% her fault. It had nothing to do with this company. But now this company is going to be held possibly liable because of her foolishness. And as a business owner, that is very scary. And people co-signing this, you should be ashamed of yourself. All right. So now to conclude this story, because I'm over it. I've been editing literally all morning. It's now three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm ready to eat. I haven't eaten anything and I'm tired. Okay, I'm I'm like literally over this story that's full of fucking holes. So now to conclude this, um, people have been, you know, updating me with stuff throughout me editing. And people had said that basically she is deleting a lot of things off of social media. She's also blocking comments. And one of my tea sippers found more pictures of her from January 9th with this hairstyle. And she was able to take screenshots of this picture. But now when you go look for that same picture, she has blocked it. You're not able to see it on her social media page any longer. But we got the shots here. So now because it seems like more people are questioning her... Her and her sister then decide to post a video that just came out about 20 minutes ago. And now you see them doing what I said earlier in this video. They're finally chopping off that raggedy ass ponytail. Now, this whole situation to me just doesn't even make any sense. This is what I'm really feeling happened, okay? When she initially lied and she came out talking about she had Gorilla Glue in her hair, her hair looked like it was literally freshly done. Even that ponytail looks like a freshly braided ponytail. But when you listen to her interview, she's saying that, you know, for two weeks, she tried to wash it out. She tried to do this and that. That ponytail would have been a lot more raggedier if that ponytail was really held on with Gorilla Glue at the top because they wouldn't have been able to take it out until they cut it. But that ponytail is braided and it looks fresh. Her hair does not look freshly washed at all in her initial video. Up with Gorilla Glue on your head. Well, I did my hair and usually when I do my hair, I use a spray called Got to Be Glue. Yeah. But I didn't have any more. 
I figure if I use the Gorilla Glue, you know, by the time I come home, I could just wash it out. But when I tried to wash it out, it didn't move. And then what happened? Like, what did it feel like when it started to set? Because this is what people use to repair things like cement, which I'm sure you discovered after the fact. Yes, yes. It's just that my ponytail just kept getting tighter and tighter. And at what point after the, the first time you applied, or I guess the only time that you applied Gorilla Glue, at what point did you start to get worried that this may be a permanent thing or a lot more difficult to get out of your hair than you thought? Well, I guess by the second week after me trying to wash it out, I got with my sisters, I got with my mom, everybody was trying to give me, you know, different things about what to do to wash it out. But after, you know, that month passed, this was just like what she said in the interview, it doesn't make any sense. Now I'm going to show you the new videos that they just posted 20 minutes ago where her hair looks super jacked up. Um, they had to cut the ponytail out. Which to me makes no sense because why would they cut it out today, Tuesday, February 9th, as opposed to when she went to the hospital two days ago? Why would you not have cut it out then and actually let them really try and get in there and work on it? So I want to show y'all both of these clips. Comb every day trying to soften it up. It kind of feel like it may have softened up a bit, but we're going to use this. We have some on here already, but I'm just like, no. Like, I was able to get the... I was able to get the ponytail off, but it's still not opening it up. As y'all can see, it's still kind of holding, so it's really not letting no air in too much, but I mean, just a little bit. All right, so you guys just saw both of these clips. So at this point, this is my conclusion to all of this. I believe that when she first posted this video, she posted it for attention and she posted it, you know, in hopes of going viral. And I think what happened is that her and her sister have literally bit off way more than they can chew. I think initially, I don't really believe that it was Gorilla Glue in her hair initially. I think it was hard ass Ampro Gel. Anybody knows about finger waves and those old ass ponytail styles that we used to wear in the 90s. We used to use a lot of gel that made our hair hard. Literally, you could knock on your hair. That's how hard it would make it. And it would take tons of washes to get this hard ass gel out. I believe that that's what she initially did. That's just my opinion. But then once... You know, it started getting traction and she started getting attention and money and donations. I believe that that's when they went and they just, you know, put the Gorilla Glue in there. Why? Because think about this. When she went to the hospital two days ago, she told the news reporter, she told the interviewer that she did not want to stay in the hospital because it was going to take them 20 hours for them to get it out. I believe at that point she didn't want to get caught up. So she chose to leave the hospital and keep up this charade. But see, what's happened now is that a famous plastic surgeon in L.A. has offered her services. He's going to pay for her flight, her hotel fare and everything else. And he's going to remove it for her. So in order to get this trip and, you know, continue on with the charade, now she has to spray her shit with Gorilla Glue. Hence why they're just now cutting off her ponytail today. Hence why her hair looks a lot more raggedier today than it did even two days ago. Because think about it. If it was really Gorilla glued in, her hair wouldn't have moved. Nothing would have changed. So I don't believe that initially when she came on camera, she had Gorilla Glue in her hair. I think since then, she's probably had to spray it in to keep it up so she can keep up this whole shit. Because the hospital would have caught on. So that's why she left. But now the sudden you're willing to go... Take time off of work, time away from your family to fly to L.A. to have a famous plastic surgeon do your hair. And it's going to take the surgeon about three days to finish the job. But the hospital would have did it in 20 hours. What the hell was the difference? But it's going to take at least 20 hours. 20 hours? Two zero? Yes. Okay, so then what happened? So I, I, I asked them, you know, can I go home? You know, at least I'll be home and I'll be comfortable. Again, because she was never serious about getting this out. She was serious about getting fame and clout chasing. The reason why this is viral and taking up so much social media attention and trending, you got to understand, like I told you guys months ago, a lot of these platforms work in cahoots. For y'all who don't know, GoFundMe, a.k.a. HoFundMe, they take 2.9% of everything that's donated to anybody, Okay. They did the same thing when George Floyd died. I talked about this. That was one of the biggest come ups for GoFundMe ever. So silly things like this are going to go viral on social media because it helps these social media platforms. 
They're all struggling right now, one for relevance. They're all struggling right now for money. So, of course, they're going to verify her. Of course, they're going to make this trend on Twitter. It was announced today that Twitter is looking to start charging on their platform, like I've been telling y'all for months now, that they're going to start charging on all these social media platforms. So they're going to push foolish stories like this. GoFundMe's going to, you know, push her GoFundMe to the top of the list because they get 2.9%. So when I say that things like this go deeper and there there's more hands in the pot and there's a lot of power play and a lot of power dynamics going on in the background, that is the truth of the matter. So I'm not buying anything this woman has to say. She knew what she was doing. She was at fault. I believe she had help from her sister. And the fact that Gorilla Glue is suffering from all of this foolishness and attention seeking is straight up sad. But the sad part is because we live in this day and age and in this attention whoring society, she's going to walk away with not only a bag from GoFundMe. She'll also walk away with the lawsuit because they'll end up settling with her. OK, so she gets rewarded. But meanwhile, people who actually need help on GoFundMe, whose homes have burnt down, who are sick and fighting C-19, who are going through real stuff that we'll never see or we'll never see their GoFundMe. It's always the foolish stuff. So on that note. I'm done. I hope you guys <laughs> appreciate this video. It took me a long time to put together, a long time to edit, honey. But I am over this story. Um, you know, let me know what you guys think about the entire situation. Do you believe her? Do you feel like this is nothing more than clout chasing? And then how do you feel about the fact that so many people on social media are straight up lemmings where you can't even agree to disagree? If you believe her and you stand with her, that's fine. But you have no right to attack me and other people who see through the nonsense. Because we don't want to fall off the cliff with you guys. You're mad. Anybody who has caught this out and said, you know what? This don't make no sense. This is BS. They were chastised. They were ridiculed. They were chastised. They were ridiculed. They were bullied. And I think that's really sad. I think people have the right to their point of view, regardless if you agree or disagree. Personally, I think her and her sister are full of shit. I think they planned all this. Kudos to them on the game well played. But I'm a very good reader of bullshit. And you can't feed me shit and call it sugar. So anyways, y'all, go ahead and leave a comment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you share the video. Let me know your thoughts about this entire situation. And last but not least, make sure you hit that notification bell so that we can be down with the notification squad, honey. So I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces.